Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about just one very important topic and that is about La Porta. La Porta has announced his race to run for president for FC Barcelona. This is some huge news because we have been expecting La Porta to run for presidency for a very long time and 12 hours ago it has been official and La Porta even said it himself that he is going to be joining the race alongside Victor Font and many other presidential candidates and now that we are here we are finally going to see one of the greatest battles in Barcelona and that is going to be between Victor Font and La Porta it's going to be a very intense race yes a very intense race because we honestly just do not know who's going to be winning I do believe that by the time we do head into January we are going to see a very divided Barcelona in a good way not a divided Barcelona where everybody hates each other I'm talking about about, people are going to have different opinions on who should be elected both are going to be great both have their reasons on why they should be elected but in the end Barcelona is going to be divided in opinion who is going to win Victor Font or La Porta now let me get one thing clear there are going to be other presidential candidates but I think that the most popular candidates at the moment is going to remain Victor Font and La Porta it is also official and Barcelona have stated themselves that on January 24th 2021 is going to be the day where the elections are going to be held and so what we are going to do in this video going forward is that we are going to be talking about La Porta. La Porta did have a speech he said many things and we are going to be talking about it layer by layer. So starting with his first few statements and he said this I'm running for elections because I love the club. We have the preparation experience and determination necessary for the changes that the club needs. We have a plan and the plan is to work. I want to utilize all Barcelona fans. This is not the time to reapproach or look back. In the Barca that we propose, everyone fits. Then he continues to say, we will work to renovate La Masia so that the young players are good people and excellent athletes and that they feel the responsibility and the feeling that comes with wearing the Barcelona shirt. Our plan is to bring back the happiness to the people. It is not a simple election promise. It's an ethical, civic, moral, social and united commitment so let's stop there for a second right i'm going to be very honest here many of us and including me expected la porta to come into this election race very very aggressive because that is the type of character la porta is he is a very aggressive man when it comes to the elections and we did see that in 2015 because back in the summer of 2015 la porta was also in another presidential race alongside ex-president bartumel and within those elections while la Porta was having his time to bring out these speeches he said things like if I become the president of Barcelona again I'll make sure that we keep on winning I'll revise La Messia and I'll lay the foundation for another decade of success with me as president Messi will always be happy and UNICEF will return to the shirt so you see that huge difference with this phrase here from 2015 and the statement that we are hearing now in 2020 it is two completely different type of energy but here is why I believe La Porta is taking this soft calm approach in this presidential race and there is quite a few reasons to it too i do believe that the reason why la porta is not saying such words it is because la porta knows that Barcelona, this club, the fan base, and the people of this club are in a place where they have truly hit rock bottom. We have experienced a 8-2 loss against Bayern Munich. We have experienced a 4-0 loss against Liverpool. We have experienced Messi trying to leave FC Barcelona. This is a club that has been through so much where we have truly hit rock bottom. And Laporta is very well aware on where Barcelona is at emotionally. That is why in his statements we hear... We love Barza. These fans are united. The feeling when you get to wear the Barcelona shirt to bring happiness. This is why we're hearing these type of quotes within his statements. All of this gives you a sense of unity. The other reason why Laporta is taking such a calm approach it is because back in 2015, Barcelona was in a position where they have just won the treble. They won three trophies. They won La Copa, the Champions League, and La Liga. And while these elections were being held, Laporta knew 
that he had to take on one man, which was Bartomeu, a man who has just won three trophies in one season. So he knew that it was not going to be easy. He knew that he had to be very, very convincing in order to win those 2015 elections. But the socios did not see it in that way. They said, look, Bartomeu won us three trophies. Bartomeu was elected back in 2014. We did try to make him call for elections on January 2015. But because of what happened in this year, because Barcelona played so well and we won so many trophies, let's go for Bartomeu and have him continue going forward. And that is why Laporta did lose. And that is also why Laporta had to take out such words. Even Laporta knew in that time that there was a high chance he was not going to win. And he said this, if we had not won the trouble, these elections would have been very, very different. But I am a Barcelona fan and I much prefer to have won the treble. So Laporta knew and that is why Laporta was very aggressive in those statements. But again, speaking about Barcelona in 2020, Laporta does not have to do much to convince the socios of Barcelona. So I do want to move on to the next statement and he did speak about the financial issues of Barcelona and he said this, we have studied the economic and financial situation of the club. We have to work to get new proposals to generate income and to make appropriate decisions. We have a detailed plan. Barcelona's economic situation is dramatic. We will have to work, roll up our sleeves, pick up the suitcase and go out to sell. And it's very interesting to hear this because it really does seem like Laporta has been working on Barcelona's plan for a very long time. Very similar to Victor Font because the fact that he did say that he does have a detailed plan on how he's going to be fixing the economic situation of Barcelona. I have a feeling that Laporta has been working on this plan longer than we have expected. So, so far, I do like the approach that Laporta is taking. He's taking a very calm and calculated approach. He is saying that, yes, we need to love Barcelona again. We need to be a unity. And I'm also going to be fixing the financial issues of this club. It's a very calculated move from Laporta. But now I do want to speak on the areas on where I know and you and me know all the eyes and ears are going to be on. And that is going to be about Lionel Messi, Ronald Koeman, Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland. These are going to be the four main subjects many socios and Barcelona fans in general are going to be wanting to hear for the next seven to eight months. But let's start with Lionel Messi and Ronald Koeman first because these are two great figures within Barcelona at the moment where we don't even know where they're going to be at in about nine months. So Laporta spoke on Messi first and he said this, I have yet to speak with Messi. We appreciate each other. We respect each other and he has time to decide. I'm waiting to have the confidence of the socios. So here's the thing, right? And I'm going to make this very clear for the Barcelona fans and for the socios. For the ones who want Lionel Messi to stay at Barcelona, if you are a die-hard Lionel Messi fan and you are that person that would not breathe if Messi does not wear that Barcelona shirt in the next season, if you want Messi to stay at this club, La Porta has to be elected. Laporta is that man to convince Messi to stay in Barcelona. Is there a chance that Messi might stay without Laporta? There is, but the chances are going to greatly increase on Messi staying if Laporta is elected as the Barcelona president. And this is something that the socios know, the coaches know, the players know, and even Laporta himself does know this. Why? It is because Laporta has great influence with this Barcelona club. And let me explain why. I don't know if you guys noticed, but every time we do hear Victor Font go out there and speak in these interviews and when people ask him about are you going to keep Lionel Messi are you going to work on keeping a player like him in Barcelona Victor Font always responds with this Barcelona and Messi have a great relationship I have no doubt that Messi is going to stay or he either responds with this we must convince Lionel Messi notice how he says we must convince or he says Messi will listen to us notice how he does say us he never says I right and even when Bartomeu was still the president of Barcelona, he did say that we must congratulate ourselves because Messi has taken the decision to stay with us. Notice how Victor Font and Bartomeu and many other presidential candidates are saying us, we, Barza and Messi. They never say I. But what is the one thing that Laporta did say in this statement? He said, I have yet to speak with Messi. We appreciate each other. We respect each other. He has time to decide. I am waiting to have the confidence of the socios. And again, Laporta Porta knows himself that he himself is the only man that can convince Lionel Messi on his own. So even though many people have said that Laporta have not has not said much 
within these statements and that he has been very bland i know for a fact that these statements here mean so much to one player and that is lionel messi and then moving on to ronald kuman and he said this kuman deserves respect he is a great of barcelona and he has a margin a margin that his contract allows he's our coach and he has a contract so this is telling me one very important thing la porta does not want to throw off ronald kuman as of yet i think that this is telling us that we're probably not even going to hear la porta present the coach that he does want to work with i do believe that la porta does not want to burn any bridges with the coach because it is way too early to tell many candidates are going to be coming into this race having their own coach in mind but with la porta that is not the case now there has been questions what is going to be the structure on transfers once la porta is elected and he did say this in my structure the coach will train the technical secretary will propose and the president and the board will decide which ultimately means that the sporting director director is going to be presenting many players the coach is also going to be looking at that list of the players and then the president is going to be having the final say on whether that player should come or not to be very honest this is a system that does not really resonate with many Barcelona fans we know that one of the best ideas clubs do have is that they do have the coach have full control of all of the transfers Victor Font also know this he did say that Xavi Hernandez is going to be having full control of every player but within La Porta's plan he is stating that he is going to be having the final say and so you would assume that maybe Laporta is not going to be that man to give the coach Ronald Koeman full control of all of the transfers he does want but then again we have to look at the history of Laporta he is the man that also brought Ronaldinho David Villa and Henry within his time as the Barcelona president so he did plug holes in a sense but it made sense and then as for the rest of the team he did leave it towards La Mesilla so his plan actually did work he did it in the correct way so it's very hard to argue against it when Laporta has history that his system does work. And so lastly, I do want to speak about Erling Haaland and Mbappe. And Laporta did say this, they are excellent. But before signing, we have to look at the club first. Talking about deals outside the club would be a disrespect for the players now. Now notice how Laporta did not rule anything off regarding these two players. He does want to keep it open. And to be very honest, I have no doubt that Laporta is going to be making a big move within these next two two years but the fact that he did say that he does not want to disrespect the players this is a smart chess move coming from this presidential candidate because Laporta knows that there is a chance that this club might be stuck with these players because if we are going to be maintaining these players and you cannot sell them because no club can afford them it would make no sense for Laporta to say I would welcome Mbappe and Halan any day and we are going to try and get these players knowing that our players right now in those positions is Dembele and Antoine Griezmann and if you speak about those players out there in those interviews knowing that you already have established players in Barcelona you are going to be burning bridges before you even start your era as the president of Barcelona and Laporta does not want that Laporta does not want to have any tension with any of these players in the club for at least the next two or three years so it's a smart chess move coming from Laporta but that is where we do stand regarding these two players Ronald Koeman and Lionel Messi we are going to hear a more aggressive approach later throughout this campaign I do expect La Puerta to say so much more within these next five to six weeks so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens what La Puerta is going to say but whatever happens whatever he does say it is going to be talking about here in this YouTube channel so please be sure to like subscribe comment that'll be it for today's Barcelona daily news thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are new here welcome to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video